In today's video, we'll be building a chair. The design is an evolution of a concept from the first chair I ever designed all the way back in 2010. Here, you can see some terrible pictures of that. I had intended this to be a more incremental change from the original design, as shown in this SketchUp model, but in the process of the build, I decided that this almost deconstructed look was much better. All right, let's get into the build. I used a two foot by eight foot sheet of oak veneer plywood and cut all the pieces as they're laid out here. The first cuts I made were for the tops and fronts of the arm structures. These all need 45 degree bevels on the ends, so I started by cutting that into the end of the board and then cut that section to length at the same, yet opposing, angle. If that doesn't make sense, there will be a more detailed diagram with a full cut list on my website that is linked in the description below. Next, I cut these pieces to width. I then cut all the pieces shown here for the seat and backrest. With those all cut out, it's time to do some assembling. I started with the tops and fronts of the arm structure shown here. These joints were glued and nailed. I then put them in clamps, but I failed to film that process, so you won't see that here. I then took a field measurement to determine the length of the piece highlighted here. And I'm glad I did, because the math that I had done beforehand would have left them about an eighth of an inch too short. These joints were just simply glued and nailed. They did come out quite strong, but I would definitely recommend clamping, just to be safe. It's now time for the seat. To start, I drilled the pocket holes to assemble the box that the upholstered frame will attach to. I glued and nailed these together before coming back to drive in the screws. This made it easier to ensure that everything was square. I then cut the pieces for the frame to length at 45 degree angles, drilled pocket holes, and then assembled the frame. With those two pieces assembled, I started stretching the webbing that will support the foam. It's important to stretch the webbing as tightly and consistently as possible. Also, you'll want to apply plenty of staples to make sure that each length is held in place across its entire width. I like to fold it back on itself for just a little added security. Also, be sure to weave it like I've done here. This maximizes the load distribution and helps it wear evenly. With that done, I moved on to assembling the body of the chair. I started with the backrest by gluing and pocket holing it into place. The arms weren't completely square to each other, so this took a bit more work than I anticipated. It did work out though, with the seat box glued, nailed, and later screwed into place. The next step was to apply filler in a few places and then give the whole body a good sanding to prep for paint. Now for the back legs. I settled on this simple tapered design and realized I had some pre-cut pieces from this chair that were the perfect size. I just needed to give them a good sanding and then cut out the material for the post that attaches to the seat box. With those shaped, I sanded, painted, and installed them. The final step to completing the body was to make some small angled blocks for the front feet. I used some scraps of 3 quarter inch poplar by laminating them together and then cutting them at 45 degree angle. I then sanded, painted, and installed them. With the body now complete, it's time for upholstery. To start, I laid out the fabric and used the seat frame to mark the size of the top of the cover. I then used some foam to make sure that I cut the sides long enough to wrap around the foam and under the frame. Here I'm extending the marks to have guidelines while sewing the seams. I then cut the corners from the fabric, leaving a seam allowance of around half an inch from my lines. I couldn't find my sewing pin, so I improvised and used an office staple to hold the fabric in place while I sewed. It worked out really well. And then to complete the seat cover, I sewed along my marked lines. For the backrest, I had to start by shaping the foam. I began by cutting a triangular piece and then cut one of the edges off so that it fit the frame. For the cover, I traced the profile of the foam, made two pieces that shape, cut a piece to width and length for the face of the cover, and then used the stapler to pin it all together for sewing. 
With both covers ready, I went back out to the shop and cut out the poly wrap for the seat and then tacked it in place. I then inserted that fiber covered cushion into the cover, trimmed the excess fabric, and got to stapling. Learning to upholster is probably easiest with a hands-on trial and error approach. I do have some tips though. Start from the middle of a side, apply even tension on the fabric as you staple, and don't be afraid to take those staples out and try again if things don't look quite right. Other than those few things, just keep at it and have fun with it. The backrest was the same process, though you'll see that I glued a piece of quarter inch plywood to the back of the foam to have something to staple into. This will also give me a way to attach it to the chair from the back with screws. And with the upholstering finished, I grabbed some screws and a few brackets and finished the assembly. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this project, hit that like button and consider subscribing. If you want to see what I'm working on next, find me on Instagram through the link in the description. See you next time.